What's going on, New York Giant fans? Nick Filato here to break down Eric Gray, running back out of Oklahoma. The New York Giants selected him 99 picks after they traded up to secure wide receiver out of Tennessee, the former school that Eric Gray used to play for, Jalen Hyatt. Eric Gray is going to come into this running back room and compete for snaps in year one. And we do not know the future of Saquon Barkley with the New York football giants. So adding competent depth to the running back room was a wise move by Joe Shane. We knew they were in the running back market as I bring up some of Eric Gray's strengths and some of the things he could improve on. On the screen right here, you can see it. Eric Gray had 1,366 rushing yards this past season, averaged 6.4 yards per carry in a full-time role for the Oklahoma Sooners. Throughout his college career, he also had 99 catches for just over 800 yards with five touchdowns. So he is a threat out of the backfield, as we heard in the post-draft press conference from Joe Shane and Brian Dable. Let's get into Eric Gray's film to see what he can offer the New York Giants as early as year one. The 23-year-old running back led his team in rushing in 2020 when it was at Tennessee and last season with the Oklahoma Sooners. He's a quicker-than-fast type of back. His ability to make defenders miss in a phone booth, an elevator, in the alley because of his one-cut juke ability is a very exciting trait. What Eric Gray lacks in deep speed and second gear, he makes up for with rushing instincts and short area quickness. He runs low, disappears behind blockers when he presses the line of scrimmage with control and active eyes to read defenders' flow and locate the cutback lane. While he's not a true pile mover, he's not the easiest back to bring down, and he typically shields his body well from clean contact. Gray is a controlled rusher who sifts through trash with good explosiveness up to the second level. He understands how to tempo his rushes, and he is very sudden with his movements. And as you can see, he ran a lot of power gap. He also ran a lot of zone. He ran out of the pistol, predominantly out of the shotgun, a lot of counter, tackle, dart, bash. He ran in a variety of systems, but most of them did come out of the shotgun, so there might be a little bit of a transition period for Eric Gray once he gets to the NFL. But if you're watching some of these clips here, you could see the vision. You could see his ability to make defenders miss. This play against Iowa State. Iowa State was one of my favorite games to watch because there were so many plays just like this one. Look at that safety as that safety attempts to make this tackle on Eric Gray. And if we even go back a little bit, the hole is gigantic for Eric Gray. Like, again, this was a pretty good offensive line he ran behind. You can see quarterback is going to show. We saw Daniel Jones do this so much. And now you're going to hit to the backside. And you can see how the defense adjusted to that. Now look, he could go this way. He can go this way. A lot of people would be like, why doesn't he hit this hole? Well, look, he has this defender flowing over the top, and he also has 19 coming down and also can work here. So what Eric Gray is going to do is he is going to press one step up, and then he's going to cut back and try to get behind 73 and allow this safety to be picked against this tackle. And that's what he's thinking, at least. And as he explodes in that direction, the safety plays it well, but watch that stanky leg. And that is something that Eric Gray does so well. His leg is so stanky, it must not have showered in months because he plants that foot and look at the head fake, look at the shoulders, and look how low he is to the ground. Very low profile, not a big target. And the safety reacts as one would expect the safety to react. He overcommits to it, and then he just flies right past Eric Gray. And this is where Eric Gray has a lot of success. As you saw through a lot of the clips before when I was talking, he just makes defenders miss from the 5 to 10 yard area of the field. I know this is Big 12 defenders, but these short area explosive type of traits that Eric Gray possesses, as well as the nuanced understanding of how to rush the football based on what the defender is doing, to have the peripheral vision, to know what is going on around you, the overall spatial awareness, those are all traits that Eric Gray showed game in and game out at Oklahoma. And it's one of the reasons why I'm so excited about it. I'm like, watch how he sifted through that traffic right there against Iowa State. Number 47 penetrates really quick because this guard goes and they're going to try to form the double team on number 95. And I'm guessing the guard thought the tackle would block down and the tight end would block down here. That's not exactly what happened. You have double team here and then you get a double team here, but 47 penetrates and it's right into the face of where Eric Gray is. Eric Gray gets it and the trapping Anton Harrison, which I absolutely love because he decleats 47. Traps him right there. Like That's just a pure and utter trap block. And we're going to watch it one more time just because it's that exciting from Anton Harrison. First round pick. But that forces Eric Gray to stop. And you can see how 52 also gets penetration through the block of the tackle. So Eric Gray has to avoid 47 coming in with a head of steam 
watches him get absolutely obliterated by Harrison, but then he has to jump around 64 and 52 who get into the backfield, and now he gets north. And this is another thing I love about him is the decisiveness of Eric Gray. He puts that foot in the ground, and what does he do? He just gets north right away, feels the arm tackle coming from 95, who ends up tackling him, but you can see how he's just juking around. The fact that he turned this into a positive play is actually pretty damn impressive. And I know it's not a huge gain or anything like that, but that is, that's just dancing in the backfield when you have to dance. Sometimes running backs can dance when they don't have to dance. Here he's dancing because he has to dance and he gets positive yardage, and I respect that. Gray is going to run behind Anton Harrison and a double-team block that knocks Felix and Udike Uzama down to the ground. Then he's going to cut back between that little block and then spin. He's a, he's a big spinner. And one thing I love about Eric Gray when he spins is he's really controlled. Now, he gets tackled here. But you'll see throughout these clips that there are times where Eric Gray spins. He comes to balance very quickly and doesn't really lose any momentum when he wants to get north. Another one of those little things that I really appreciate about his game. Against TCU on this play, he's going to read D. Winters, this defender right here, number 13. He's going to feel the lateral flow into that gap. He's going to see, oh, that defender removed himself, and now we only have a safety in the alley. I'm just going to cut this right back, and then the quarterback throws a nice block, and this is where it issues kind of arise in his game because if he was a better athlete and not a 4-6-5 deep speed type of player, I don't even want to say better athlete because I think he's a good athlete. He just doesn't have deep speed. He doesn't have a second gear. He doesn't have a lot of acceleration. But if he was, he might be able to house this because this guy gets a hold of his knees and drags him down. He would have to outrun this player right here, but he could take it all the way to the house if he had some type of difference making speed like a like a Devin A chain or like an Israel Abataconda from this draft the kid from Texas A&M and Pitt but just the instincts and the feel for when to cut the football back and to know that the linebacker positioned him here this player did not scrape and replace so now you have two linebackers in the middle why go this way when you can cut back and only have this player to defeat so that's exactly what happens really heady play by number 11 the quarterback to also throw the block on the safety coming downhill another play against iowa state we like these plays he just bounces it outside jukes a pursuit defender very very quick very sudden you feel that you do not have the angle to the outside, so use the momentum of the defender against you to cut right back inside, pick up a couple extra yards, run out of bounds. And this is a very impressive run. He's going to hit the same side out of a shotgun. You're going to have a little zone block, split block from number 12 to take on the end man on the line of scrimmage. And now it's you against an alley defender, Eric Gray. Make a miss, spin off number zero. That's exactly what happens. Like we said, stanky leg, right? That leg smells really bad. And number 19 just looks foolish after he misses his tackle. Finds the hole. Very, very smooth running. Smooth and efficient running back. That's what Eric Gray is. Not a home run hitter, but a smooth and efficient running back with good footwork. And again, you can see him here kind of get tracked down. I think number two has a decent angle on him, but he finds the hole. Another zone type of run. We see a lot of power gap runs a little earlier. These are some zone runs, right? You have these double teams just kind of forming. Everyone's stepping to the play side. All the offensive linemen. A little stretch zone, but just because it's stretch zone doesn't mean you have to take it wide, right? You can cut this stuff right back up, and that's exactly what happens off the split block right here. And you can see on number 92, the nose, he's getting that double team. 29 gets intercepted. Split block landed. Hit the gap. You against 21. That's what you want. And then you can see how the backside wide receiver makes a block on 21 too. Now it's Eric Gray against the pursuit defender who's down in the box. He's able to track him down. Still, he found the hole. He located the hole. Uh, phrasing. And this is another play where Eric Gray has to extemporize a bit. Another split zone type of run out of shotgun. Number nine is going to take this end man on the line of scrimmage who kind of comes downhill and fills. You can see he takes the desired gap of Eric Gray. And he fits it. And this is going to force and spill Eric Gray to the outside where you have one blocker and two defenders. Now you have number eight running in that direction. We saw the quarterback throw the block before. That was number 11. But Eric Gray is going to have to jump around this. And now he's in a position where he has a pursuit defender coming here, has a guy from depth, a blocker engaged right here, and then another defender. So what does he do? He spins right off that. And he makes a miss too. It's a very controlled play, like I said. Makes a miss, gathers himself up. It's one thing I like about Eric Gray just in general. A lot of outside runs, you don't really see as much here. I guess you can say maybe at this area. But he, when he's running outside zone, does not require a lot of gather steps to get horizontal to vertical. As I said before, efficient footwork. 
and he's also efficient when he uses these spins and these jukes. But here you can kind of see what I'm talking about with the gather steps. It's actually really prompt that I just mentioned that. It's a split back type of look against Texas Tech. Handoff, and you can see you have one, two, three, four defenders. And then you have this huge cutback lane. But can you gather your momentum as you're flowing laterally to get north in a very precise and quick manner? Eric Gray can. You can see how he just chop, chop, one, two, and he's north. And he's able to pick up a couple yards by feeling the lateral flow of the defenders and making them pay for over pursuing big 12 a lot more space than let's say the big 10 and the sec but regardless of the fact he's positioning himself advantageously now we're going to see some touchdown runs from eric gray on this one he just gets the handoff and he has basically a straight alley to the end zone with this blocker right here but i like how he kind of angles his body to avoid clean contact from this player and you can see that player ends up hitting kind of the backside hip and then he runs through 14 as well and easily just kind of trots into the end zone like i said earlier he's not a pile mover he's not going to be jerome bettis out there in terms of physicality but he could angle his body well and make defenders have these difficult tackle attempts you can see it kind of here with baylor he kind of just lowers his shoulder and bounces off of a couple guys, pinballs around. Good blocking up front. And one thing I like about Eric Gray, too, is he gets really skinny, follows his blocks, knows how to read his blocks, and finds the end zone. Here, he just sticks the ball over the goal line, gets a touchdown. So he has operated in short yardage situations in a Power 5 conference to a solid degree. So it's something to note. We're just going to see him in space. This is one of his longer touchdowns in his college career. Again, feels the flow of this Kansas defense. He's going to take this hand off. The box is so light. The blocking, and this was like a first and 10 play too. It wasn't even like a third and long play. Watch how he explodes into space, and then he feels both of these guys coming this way. Knows he doesn't have a lot of space, can't get north, so he's going to juke around. And he just misses getting contacted by the umpire. But he finds his way into the end zone, and there's something to be said about that from Eric Gray. So you can see he's not a burner. It's just not his game. We're going to watch a bunch of check down plays from Eric Gray here. You can see some of the shiftiness, some of the exotic moves, the spins, and the jukes. And it's not like he ran a diverse route tree at Oklahoma. He had one catch on a, on a slot slant from a stack behind Marvin Mims where he ran into Marvin Mims. But a lot of his receiving profile at Oklahoma, at least, was this. Just simple check downs either to the flat or or OTB over the football, but the dangerous part about his game is, yes, he might not be the most linear type of athlete in terms of a player who runs a 4-3-6 or anything like that, but he can catch the football, and if you're not in tight coverage, he can make you miss just by these little short area movements and the way he angles his body to be deceptive on what exactly he is doing, and that's where Eric Gray thrives. You get him the football in space, there you can see how he spins off of a tackle, this guy has a clean tackle attempt. I believe that's Julius Brents, too. This is Kansas State. It's 23. It's Julius Brents. Clean tackle attempt. And then 41 has a clean tackle attempt. But watch how he just spins out of Julius Brents, then recollects his balance, sees 41 right in his face. So what does he do? He dips that outside shoulder, steps to the inside, and now 41, who's attempting to go for the football, misses the tackle. And then what? Eric Gray gets his eyes right up, and he's like, oh, crap, I have some space to operate. Let me get north. And he just starts to run, and he gets tracked down. Now, this is the play I was referring to before where it was his catch out of a stack. He's on the line of scrimmage, and he's going to kind of run into Marvin Mims a little bit. Marvin Mims ends up going to the outside, and you can see Eric Gray just bust over the middle of the field and make the catch, get tackled. Now we're going to see some plays from Eric Gray in pass protection. And look, Eric Gray isn't the biggest. He's not the most physical player, but he can identify where the blitz is coming from, He's typically assignment sound in that manner, and he can just get in the way. He's willing, right? He's not one of those running backs out there who's like, you know, I don't really want to throw around my weight in terms of pass protection. No, he will stick his nose in you. It's just, he's five foot nine, 207 pounds. And the 207 pounds, I, I feel like he's pretty thin frame for a running back that is north of 200 pounds. But you can see there, he handles his responsibility, gets some help. Here he's going to run into number 55, just get in the way, and 55 just discards him. But that's an edge rusher right there. To me, this, this isn't a terrible blocking rep from Eric Gray because he just gets in his way long enough and the quarterback gets rid of the football. I like this play a lot from Eric Gray. Now, 
He has an advantage because he is aligned in the A-gap where 47 is sugaring, but he makes contact with 47, throws him into the guard, and then watch him come off 47 and then make contact with 17. Now, 17 kind of forces the quarterback to throw the football, maybe a little early, but you can see, man, that is A, athletic to have the type of footwork and open your hips in that manner to make contact with 17, but to just know and not panic as a running back. You're not an offensive lineman. You're not a center throwing this block. You're a running back. Make contact with 47. Look, his hips are angled in this direction. 17 has a wide open gap to get after this quarterback. And he is able to just pivot off that outside foot, make contact with 17, and throw him into an adjacent offensive lineman. So that's a very good play from Eric Gray. And here we see him get in the way of 15. 15 just kind of gets around him. Just get in the way long enough to allow the quarterback to throw the football. And I feel like Eric Gray does that to a solid degree as someone in pass protection. Not the biggest, not the strongest, but he can get in your way and he wants to. He has the desire to. And he also has the intelligence to, as you can see here, because you have number one coming. Now let's break this play down from a protection standpoint. Let's get into the nitty gritty. So we have number nine, who's going to be isolated against the guard. So to the right side of the line of scrimmage, you're going to have a tackle against 30, number nine against the guard, centers in a one technique. Is the nose going into the guard to occupy him? Is he going through the outside of the center to remove him from the play? Who's coming on this blitz? And you can see how Eric Gray has to account for number one and number zero in the protection based on what number 92 does. So watch Eric Gray. Hike, he steps. Oh, am I going to run a route? No, I am needed in protection here. Let me look at number one. Number one is going to be occupied by the guard because number 92 went inside. The other guard is going to be occupied with the defensive lineman who was trying to slant through the A-gap. Eric Gray knows that he is going to be responsible for number zero. No one else is going to be able to get to him. So he comes across a formation after identifying it so well, but his execution is bad. He just kind of lunges that inside shoulder in and number zero just kind of swims right around and gets pressure on the quarterback who almost throws a pick on this play to a safety kind of planting and driving downhill to undercut Marvin Mims. I love how he identified this play and how he processed it. It's an underrated trait of running backs, and it's typically a trait that gets you on the football field early when you're a rookie. But you gotta at least make clean contact on your defender. And he doesn't here. He allows the defender to just jump right inside. So you need better execution from Eric Gray there. But you know what? He's at least putting himself into the position to succeed. All the coaches at Oklahoma raved about this kid's work ethic, about this kid's character. So hopefully the New York Giants really landed themselves a culture fit, a player fit, and someone who could find the football field in 2023. And that's our somewhat brief video on running back out of Oklahoma, Eric Ray. Welcome to the New York football Giants. This guy can earn a role as early as year one behind Saquon Barkley, spelling Saquon Barkley. I don't think he's an asset in pass protection just yet, but he does seem to identify and locate well and just be a speed bump against these linebackers and these defensive backs. Just get in their way to allow Daniel Jones to either find that B gap like he did so often in 2022 or to locate, hopefully, Jalen Hyatt way down the football field. But Eric Gray should get some playing time. And if Saquon Barkley does leave the New York Giants, I believe Eric Gray can help form a committee with whoever else the Giants end up adding in the future. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video on Oklahoma running back, now New York Giant running back, Eric Gray. If you have not done so already, please like and subscribe. Comment, if you will. That would be lovely. And also head on over to BigBlueView.com where we are extensively covering each of these NFL draft picks, doing detailed film breakdowns on them, how they will fit with the New York Giants. And of course, we are covering the Giants very intently. So thanks again and have a lovely day.